We are joined now by Dr. Michelle Fiscus, formerly the top vaccine official in the state of Tennessee. She says that she was fired from her role as the medical director of the Vaccine Preventable Diseases and Immunization Program at the Tennessee Department of Health after sharing a memo with medical providers outlining guidelines on whether older minors could be vaccinated without parental consent. Dr. Fiscus, we thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks so much for having me. So first, just quickly explain to our audience what was in that memo and the response that it generated from the state's political leaders. Thank you. Yes, so um, I had been uh, reached out to by several medical providers in the state that were providing COVID-19 vaccines. And this was just before the authorization of the Pfizer vaccine down to age 12. And they were asking, what do we do if a minor shows up to be vaccinated and they're not accompanied by a parent? Can we, can we vaccinate them or not? And uh, so I reached out to the general counsel at Tennessee Department of Health and asked them for language around Tennessee's mature minor doctrine, which is Tennessee Supreme Court um, case law that went into effect in 1987, 34 years ago, that states that children who are ages 14 and older, if deemed mature enough to make the decision by their medical provider, can elect to um, have medical treatment without the consent of their parent. Um, um, our Office of General Counsel sent me the, the language around that, told me that it was approved by uh, or blessed by the governor's office, told me it was posted to the internet, it was publicly available, and that I could share that information however I saw fit. So I put it into a memo to our COVID-19 vaccine providers in the state, some of whom uh, apparently had concerns about that and felt that the communication to these medical professionals was an attempt on my part to undermine parental authority for the control of their children um, in making medical decisions. Um, that progressed to uh, them contacting state legislators who um, eventually called the Department of Health to a government ops uh, meeting on June the 16th, where um, some legislators went so far as to call for the dissolution of the State Department of Health, um, claiming that we were targeting children inappropriately um, when what I had done was share a 34-year-old Tennessee case law um, for the awareness of those providers so that they would understand where the rules were around vaccinating minors in the state of Tennessee. And you wrote in the Tennessean newspaper, I have been terminated for doing my job because some of our politicians have bought into the anti-vaccine misinformation campaign rather than taking the time to speak with the medical experts. And it is the people of Tennessee who will suffer the consequences of the actions of the very people they put into power. Your state currently only has 38% of its residents fully vaccinated. How much do you believe that politics and misinformation is hurting public health efforts to convince more people to get vaccinated there? I think it weighs heavily upon that. You know, we, we know, uh, especially as pediatricians who've worked in vaccine hesitancy for decades now, that you can move people to making the, the right choice for their health and, and their well-being. Um, if you make a strong recommendation for getting vaccinated, it's it's one of the things that um, that is most important in getting parents to vaccinate their children is a provider's strong recommendation. Um, we have not been permitted to um, message a strong recommendation to receive COVID-19 vaccines. And, uh, and, and then there's this odd ideology that seems to have um, come into play where getting a COVID-19 vaccine is thought of as somehow placating uh, the left. Um, you know, public health is not political. It, it should never be political. Vaccines should never be political. This is public health. This is doing what is best for the public good. And, um, and unfortunately, politics is, has really um, seeped into um, this entire response. And, and doctor, you have said, I am afraid for my state. What are you most afraid of for? with our state's poor vaccination rates, which is not because of access to vaccines, but because people are unwilling to get them. What we're going to see is increasing cases, especially as new and more infectious variants like the Delta variant um, evolve in this pandemic. And we're going to see more sickness and more death in a state that has already had an extraordinary number of cases and where some one out of every 540 Tennesseans has lost their lives to this pandemic. Every death going forward is preventable. 
And it's only through getting those vaccines that we're going to see that happen. And until um, we get that message out to people and start encouraging them to get vaccinated and explain the importance of that, we're going to continue to see people die needlessly. Hey, the Tennessean has also reported that the state health department is now halting all vaccine outreach to children, not just for COVID vaccines, but vaccines of any kind. We've reported on the decline in childhood vaccinations during the pandemic. As a public health expert, just explain what kind of impact that could have on your state to not have this kind of outreach on immunizations. Well, we're about 30,000 doses of measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine behind right now that, that were not administered to children entering kindergarten last year because of the pandemic. Um, and that's a lot of kids that we need to get vaccinated. Um, you know, we're not permitted to remind their parents that they need to get vaccinated. We also had a huge reduction, 67% reduction in the number of HPV vaccines that were provided to adolescents just in April of last year compared to 2019. Um, and so the, the toll of um, of the inability of public health to do the work of public health because politics has um, gotten in the way and begun to obstruct this access uh, for Tennesseans um, can result in not only outbreaks of highly infectious diseases like measles diseases like measles, but you know even impacts individuals maybe 20, 30, 40 years down the road um, with diseases that we could have prevented right now. Just talk about the broader atmosphere facing public health officials right now, especially in states like yours with higher rates of vaccine hesitancy. Now, there are 64 um, people in my position, my former position, across the states and territories um, and tribes in, in the country. And um, I'm the 25th that I'm aware of that has resigned or been fired or retired early um, from that post just over the course of the pandemic. And so, um, you know, for the, the other 24 individuals that were in my role and for those that remain, um, I have been provided a platform to speak out in, in support of public health um, and tell the American people how um, politics is getting in the way of protecting and, uh, and promoting the health and well-being of, of the people not only in Tennessee but in other areas of the state and how morale amongst public health officials um, who always have what's best for the people that they serve uh, at their heart um, is just historically low at this point. And we're going to continue to lose really good career people um, as a result of this. And, uh, and I just, I think that's tragic. Um, so I, I very much appreciate the opportunity to, to speak with you and share that message. And uh, I really hope that things can turn around um, before things are too late. Dr. Fiscus, we thank you for your time and insight. And we should note ABC News reached out to the Tennessee Department of Health about Dr. Fiscus's termination. And a spokesperson responded, quote, we cannot comment on HR or personnel matters. Thanks so much, doctor. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.